Hello, and welcome to lab one of your learning experience in this season. Today, we will be talking about the application modeler. My name is Rebecca, and I will be your host for this lab, as I thought you could do with a break from Corey's rambling. Kidding. <laughs> well, on the rambling part, at least. By now, you will be aware of the importance of reading the entire lab before starting it. There is some really crucial information in there that will help you become a Blue Prism expert in no time. It will also help you build some amazing automations for your new digital workforce. Today, we are in the interactive client, the place where you build automations via drag and drop technology in Blue Prism. Within the IC, we'll be talking about two main themes, board games and gardening. Just kidding. No, today we will start to understand how Blue Prism encompasses scalability and reusability within the interactive client. And this starts in the object studio. The object studio is the how. How does the digital worker work with the applications it needs to use, like SAP, a website, Salesforce, you get the gist. How do we read an invoice number, type in a username or password, or click a checkbox? All of this exciting stuff is happening in the Object Studio. So what are you waiting for? Tip top, let's go into the lab. All right, folks, so now that we've launched Blue Prism, you have all your imports and everything else done, we're gonna to go to our Studio tab, which is accessed up here on the top or over here on the left. And we're gonna to want to expand objects. Now we've talked a little bit about processes and objects here. Remember the processes right here are the uh, what? What is my process? Is it read an email, take that purchase order, put it into an ERP system, right? You're beginning from A to B process. The object is really the how. How do we actually interact with those applications? In this instance, uh, in these labs, we're going to be doing a website. So how do we actually type in a stock ticker symbol or a click the button that, you know, is search? This is really how we have almost like the digital worker has fingerprints, if you will. So we're going to right click on objects right here and go ahead and click create object. And in there, we're going to title this one lab one object, right? Easy breezy. We'll click next. And the description, this is just also good uh, if we send our automations to other folks in your COE or other Blue Prism uh, builders. This way they can kind of get a detailed history of, of what these uh, objects and processes do. Okay, so we'll do searchesmarketwatch.com and we'll click finish. And now it should right here highlight the actual object that it's going to be uh, that you just created. That way you don't have to be searching around for it or anything like that. Okay, so go ahead and maximize your object studio. This is our canvas right here in the middle of the screen. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to go to these pages tabs right here. You can see you've got initialize, cleanup, and action one. So we'll go ahead and click on action one. And we're going to title this one. We're going to rename it. And let's call this one search. All right, next we're going to want to click on the application modeler right here. This is this uh, button here in the middle of your uh, screen right here. So we'll go ahead and click that. And now we're going to need a, uh, a name right here for said application. So our application will be a website, which is which is not blueprism.com, which is what I was about to type. Um, so this is marketwatch.com. So go ahead and type that in and go ahead and click next. Now in this, it's gonna ask us what type of application. So if we had a Windows, Java-based, even the, uh, the old school mainframe, the green and black screen for the folks that remember that. Um, but on this one, we'll wanna do Chrome, Firefox, or Edge. We're gonna be using Chrome in these labs. So go ahead and select this one. Okay. Now, if you already have an application that's already running, you'd want to uh, leave this setting right here. But in case we're going to actually be starting this from scratch, so we're going to want to launch 
um, Google Chrome from the uh, the browser there. So we'll go ahead and click next. And now we're gonna simply uh, put in that path uh, where the browser is located on your laptop or computer. Now you're just gonna get your file path, which of course you can either hit this browse button right there, or you could simply find it. Um, most people do have this in their programs, uh, 86 Google Chrome application. If you don't have it, these labs have parts that are already been completed so that we can speed up the time. What you could do is you could find where your Google Chrome installation is uh, in your folder and just grab this application copy it and paste it right over here. Um, that way you can you don't have to re-spy certain elements, which we'll show here in a little bit, but this is the path that you'll wanna do, so I would recommend uh, it's in the lab notes, of course, so go ahead and do that. If you don't have it here, like I said, just a simple copy paste and you'll be good to go. And once you get that file path, either paste it in or just hit that browse button and uh, we'll continue on. Next, we're going to want to enter the URL of the page. So again, this is in the notes. Now, I would recommend just copying and paste it because if you're like me, sometimes you can have uh, typing errors uh, as I've recently <laughs> just been nonstop having. So, okay, we'll enter our URL here and we'll click next. We're gonna leave the rest of the settings just as uh, default. So you can see here, we've got our finished application. And now we are in our application modeler. So if you go back into marketwatch.com, you can see here's our file path and the URL. So we are good to go. Now from there, what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that this uh, browser is actually opening up. So wanna go ahead and click launch. And I'm gonna bring this over here for you guys. I've got two monitors here so I can also read the instructions. And here is our website, right? So this is marketwatch.com with slash search. And this is what we're going to be starting to automate here in our object. Now notice here, if we come back to our application modeler, we've got this element one. And then you guessed it if you've read the notes. This is really where we're going to start doing our spying. So this is where we're gonna tell, remember, the objects are the how. How are we actually interacting with these applications? In this case, the website. So we'll go ahead and title this one search bar. And now we're going to hit spy. Now notice on the top left, you'll see this uh, pink red square and it says this is our identification tool. So it's telling us we're in a certain mode. The blue prism has several different modes here that you can use to spy. We have like an SAP spy mode. So if you're interacting with SAP, um, just a couple different modes that you, if you ever want to see those, you can simply hit alt. Notice I've got a windows mode, a UI mode, a region mode, but we'll come back into browser. And notice as I move my cursor, you can see all the different markers here with this little box around it. It's helping us telling exactly where we want to spy. So the one that we're going to want to do is this search bar right here. So hold control down on your keyboard and left click. Okay. Now if we come back to our application modeler here, we can see we've got our search bar. It's preloaded some attributes here. We'll get into these a little later, but this is how you can really make sure that this is resiliency. This is where Blue Prism starts to go away from screen scraping and really looking underneath the hood and actually making sure that we can have these applications uh, working resiliently for the digital worker. Now, I want to test that we spied the correct one so we could hit highlight and sure enough, there it tells us which object we did. Now, one quick note, and you'll see this in the lab notes, uh, make sure your browser is set to 100% zoom. So if it's not right here, you can go ahead and change that in Google Chrome. Um, while different zoom levels may not affect Blue Prism while it's actually running, it's just so much more easy or easier, excuse me, um, if you actually just spy it at 100%. So this is when, again, you are doing that. Okay. All right. So now that we want to do that, we've done the highlights. We now want to add a, another element. So come back into your application modeler. And right here, you can click add element. So you can see here, we've got a second one. And we're gonna call this one the search button. Okay, so go ahead and hit identify. And this time grab this search button right here, this nice green one. And we'll go ahead, it's always best practice to hit highlight just to check that we uh, of course grab the right one. And there we go. So we can now hit apply and okay. 
I should also note, for now, we're just gonna leave the website uh, open. So if you, if you close out of it, no big deal. You can uh, certainly come back in here and just hit uh, launch. This says detach because mine's already open. Or if you're in the application mode, if you ever wanna go to the marketwatch.com, you have launch right here. You can see mine is grayed out because it's already opened, right? Okay, so now that we've created to the elements, let's have some fun and start using. Now I'm gonna talk about one thing real here, just a little tidbit sneak peek, it's not in the notes, but sometimes I don't prefer these grid lines. You can uncheck them right here and you get kind of this blank canvas look. If you like the grid lines for your dragging and dropping to make sure it's very neat and organized, by all means, but just wanted to point that out there in case some people uh, wanted to kind of tweak with that a little bit. It just depends on your preference. Now here's where we're gonna get into the Blue Prism drag and drop uh, functionality. So the first part is we're gonna need a couple items. So let's grab a right stage right here on the left and just simply click it and drag it down onto the canvas like so. Wanna get a navigate stage here as well. And then last but not least, a data item, okay? So you should have something like these right here. Now we're gonna link them together. So go ahead and just click like this, drag and drop, easy breezy. We're not gonna be doing anything linking to data items, it's not possible in Blue Prism because this is where we're storing data. And by the way, there is a difference between link and pointer. Link is of course how you link things together. Pointer though will be easier for clicking, you can see here without having um, your pointer, or excuse me, your link uh, messing you up. So let's open up this data item here. And we're gonna call this search for. This is what we wanna search for, right? And we're gonna choose a data type of text. You've got several different options here, but in this case, we just want some words. So we're gonna type in the ticker DIS and click OK, right? Easy breezy so far. Um, and it's gonna continue being. <laughs> so now we'll go to our navigate one, this one here on the bottom. So double click this, okay? And we'll title this push. Push, I cannot talk today, apologize guys, or type apparently. So we're gonna type that, yeah, push search button. And now we're gonna simply drag and drop the search button, right? This is where we wanna actually click. So navigate stage is really where you do a lot of your action items. Um, and we'll go ahead and action, you know, if you needed a double click or any of these other options, you have those choice, but we're just gonna keep it simple with a nice click. Some applications require, you know, double clicks or things like that, and Blue Prism doesn't wanna leave you hanging, so we do have that, of course, built in. All right, and last but not least, you guessed it, we're gonna be toying here with the right stage. So we'll call this one Enter Search, and we're gonna go ahead and grab our element here. So search bar is where we're going to be doing the typing. And our value we wanna get over here on the left. So you're gonna to wanna to expand text and drag and drop search for here into the value, okay? So go ahead and click okay. And your should now screen look just like this. So this leaves us just one final test and that is to actually see this in action. So we're gonna go ahead and hit the reset, okay? Notice your errors went down to zero. We'll talk about that in a little later lapse. And then you're gonna go ahead and hit play. So give me a second here while I move these screens side by side so you can kind of get a view of, of what goes on. Okay, so I've got my automation over studio over here. So let's go ahead again and hit that reset. And we're gonna go ahead and hit play and watch the DIS over here and the search. Okay, so it goes into search. You can see DIS populate, it loads, and there is our Disney stock ticker right there, okay? Now we'll talk in later labs about stepping through or speeding things up, but congratulations, you have completed the first lab. So let's uh, turn it back over for the uh, wrap up.